Got the mold pretty much polished up, ready to do the deck, but now I've got to consider doing those window inserts. I've got three and a half days to get the entire thing ready, prepped, and ready to gel coat on Saturday. I'm running out of time, Janet's committed to doing some mornings and nights, so it's getting uh, to the pointy end of the deck gel coating session. Um, I've got these inserts that I've just broken. <laughs> That's how old they are, they're starting to fall apart. But these are the window templates four up on the deck and obviously I need to cut this is actually the window cutout templates but what I'm going to use I've only got one of these to base it on and I'm assuming they're going to be symmetrical on both sides and I've just gone up and tested the template up on the uh, up on the deck and they are so what I've got is I've just ordered and received four sheets of 12 millimeter MDF with a melamine side on it and that's really critical because I need to have the melamine side on it to make sure that I can physically release it from the mold. If it was chipboard or uh, some other sort of composite wood, good chance I'm gonna have trouble getting it off. I'm gonna be able to wax this up, route it, do all the stuff you need to do to get the window inserts done. So I've got plenty to do here. Probably a good day's work just doing all these cutouts, but once I get them done, I'll be able to whack them straight on the molds, get back to polishing, waxing, release waxing, sealer glazing, and then a final wax before the day uh, on Saturday. All right, so I've got the first of the templates on here. Now you can see they've actually been cursed. So what I need to do is I need to clamp them down to square them up to make sure they're straight before I can then go and curse them. So I'm going to clamp each corner wherever I can. I think I've finally sussed the flickering on this DJI Osmo camera I've got. The, the problem is, because it's got a thing called um, Rock Steady. It has about a half a second delay as I move across, and I think that's to stabilize it. I've set it at 50 hertz, which is avoiding the flickering of the, uh, the fluoro lights. Now, very important too, if you move the camera, it starts to flicker again. And I know I did a couple of uh, uh, tutorials on, on using Premiere Pro, and it said if I duplicate the timeline over the top and move the top timeline half a step or one frame forward, and then dissolve it to 50% opacity, I'd avoid it. I tried that and it looked like I was a ghost. I was like moving all over the place. But I think I've solved it. I'm looking at it now and it actually looks pretty good. So 50 hertz and turn the rock steady off and you're in business. I think that's the winner. Now, going back to what I was saying before, this template here is curved. It's actually curved as the, the uh, cabin is actually curved. So these will need to be curved. So the key will be to flatten it out do my outline, cut it out, then kerf it to the shape of the deck. There's gonna be a lot of work involved here, so I'm gonna get onto that straight away. All right, so the edges are broken off on this one. I've gotta replicate this, but somehow there is a curve here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna continue this line, which is actually a straight line, all the way down. And then somehow I've gotta get a bit of a tangent off here, and I think that's pretty much gonna to have to that's gonna to have to suffice what I've done there because it is a, a slight curve, but it will do for now because it's gonna be hard to get the exact fit. And I think that's gonna be pretty close. And obviously we want this corner rounded off. We don't have square edged windows because they'll be more prone to lifting. And same deal up here. We've got a, a yet another curve, but I'm gonna to have to try to sort of almost guess this last section here. Right, so these are all cut and uh, this is the last one. Now this is actually a lot longer. I'm sorry about the flickering, but it seems to be if I hold it dead steady, it goes away. So this piece here is actually longer than my board. So I'll have to make an extension. I'm gonna have to do two of these plus their extension. So I'll get onto them now. I've just gone up and got the template.
this has been a bit of a big afternoon cutting all these out. I've got to now cut this last one or the last two out and then I've got to tidy up the edges and route them. Uh, wrap the top edge so that I'll get a radius with which to glass over. Um, on the boat itself, I'm going to be putting a radius here of plasticine down in this area here so that when I laminate up over the top, um, I'll basically get that nice sort of rounded finish. So this will need to be radiused over the top here on this board and then obviously uh, waxed up and, and the works. But hopefully I can remove these out of the mould without damaging them. I don't like my chances of that. Um, uh, yeah, that could be a little bit of a problem, but anyway, we'll see how we go. Try and get the most out of my board here. Curving these things was a bit of an effort, but they're gonna bend quite nicely to the shape here around the windows and in between these mullions here. So what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna actually batten screw a 4B2 onto the middle section of the two main windows here and here so that we've got an ability to be able to walk up it. Because I've just remembered that everyone is a lot shorter than I am that's gonna help here on the weekend and uh, we need to be able to traffic our way up to the deck without disturbing the gel coat and you can't walk up this stuff because it's too slippery and quite frankly there's nowhere that's not going to be slippery before I gel coat this thing and then once the gel coat's down we won't, won't want to be putting our foot on an angle and then sliding it away or it'll actually damage the gel coat so I'm batten screwing a, a step here so that we can at least you know perhaps use it as a bit of a ladder to get up and, uh, and that'll just come off with the mould and hopefully I won't glass over it. That's the idea is not glass over because this, these windows here are not gonna have a, a full complement of laminate across it. They're basically going to just have two or three layers on it just to consolidate that edge of the window insert. So I'm gonna screw that on now. I've already done this one over here and then I'm gonna use that to do the locating of the, uh, of the panels onto the wall here. So it's holding in place. Oh, yeah, well, the idea is I want to use those as a plate. Yeah, now you can pull it down. Oh, right, can you turn it from the lift to lift? Oh, I can back it out just so you can put one in. Alright. Well, you're up the right line that way. Have a look. Can you just come here and put it on one end? Oh, I'll just do it. I'll hold it then. That's right. So, what do you reckon, John? Looks good. Yeah, it looks alright. Right, uh, we just got to be careful we don't knock them now. Right, so that one's going to curve down. That's why we need to bolt them down rather than screw them. I think they're going to just pop out. Yeah, yeah, we'll look at the gap underneath Stuff's there. just too weak. I can't see underneath whether you need to come. No, I'll just get the top line up. can't line up the bottom. Righto. That's a lot better. Still not all the way down, I don't think it matters to be honest, because all I'm worried about is this. Yes, the edge. This bit, I sort of want it to bubble a bit, because that means it won't get touched. So you'll have to bolt, 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 right around. No, I'll just put one in the corner. Just hold it in. Oh, that's had some serious progress here. That has been a serious morning and night's work, but they're in, and I'm pretty happy. They look pretty good, I reckon. Hey, you reckon, Jen? That looks fantastic. Yep. Having fun? It's 
great. Check out my windows. Oh, they look sensational. Curf me, baby. <laughs> and curfing all day. Okay, I finished all the smaller side uh, window inserts. They're in, they're just screwed on and tacked in place, so they're located, but I still need to bolt them from the outside. You gotta remember, these are going to come off with the deck when it's demolded, so they've gotta be pretty secure. I'm really only interested in the sort of the last inch and a half or the last 40 odd millimeters all the way around the outside. The rest is ultimately going to be cut out apart from this section here. But you know, at the end of the day, that's basically an insert where there's windows totally inserted. And uh, I've got the other one here, ready to go up there. I'm able to sort of put these ones in on my own. The other ones I couldn't, I was simply too hard, but they're batten screwed on these big ones. So I've got about a hundred screws, I think, uh, bolts and nuts to put in place to get these guys in place here. But yeah, that's looking really good. That's been a major milestone getting these window inserts in. Uh, spent all day yesterday cutting, shaping, routing, and uh, and then obviously this morning curving the bastards to get them to curve to the deck. Next thing is to put some bolts in around the outside perimeter of this curved panel, and that's gonna tie it down to the mold. Now I have to basically bolt it through with a, uh, like a gal coach bolt here. Really can't rely on screws with MDF. If one of them pops out, it's gonna totally ruin my job, so I'm gonna bolt it down with a ratchet spanner and a nut on the other side. One thing I really need to be careful of is this bolt here, when I laminate over the top of that, that could create problems. Now, what that could cause is um, is an, an ability not to be able to demold this boat. Now, that could be a big problem in, uh, in the long run. And uh, what I've got to do is I'm going to have to take this with something and ensure that I'm going to be able to get to that later on when I come to demold, every one of these bolts is going to have to be undone and this bolt passed back through so that this panel lifts off with the demolded hull. It's going to be a little bit of fun. Alright, which one are you doing? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, go for it. Ross is underneath the hole, putting a tightening up the screw because we're what we're trying to do is make these pieces of wood flush to the mould, which are the windows rather than just pieces of wood. So that um, the curves on the outside are so we can get the inset for the window, but we're trying to get them as flush as possible for when these sprays. Yeah. Alright. Is that the one that's stopping it from folding, from laying flat? How's that? Is it down? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I just caught my back on a batten screw. <laughs> that might have been back scratched, but that was a bit old. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit yeah, weary. Make it its way hard work under. Give me that camera, I'm just going to show you the predicament. Thanks. <laughs> so, every bolt, how many is there? 80, I think we had, we counted. Okay. It's about 80. So, luckily, Ratchet Spanner is the winner, and Janet, you're the winner, honey. <laughs> Alright, which, how many more we got? Two. I don't think that bolt's going to be long enough. Which one? That but, one. You this corner, Is that one going to go down? We haven't got this corner, Yeah, but can you get that one in or not? I might have to refill that one. Oh, that was that problem we had over there too, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah right. See, Let's get that one in. Okay. All right. Let's go and have a look under here. Oh, da 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 got to watch it. Catch your back on a batten screw that's protruding out of it. Oh, it's lethal under here. Where are you, Jen? Oh. It's a bit tight in here. Okay. Just dropped my box of nuts and bolts and swore, as you do. And uh, Janet wasn't too impressed. Hey? Hey, well, let me get that one on.
Okay, so all of these edges have got to be filled with plasticine, as you can see there, um, put in and then shaped like this, all the way around every single surface here. So you can see here, I've already done these first three windows here. They're not finished. I need to come back and tidy them with a with a wet damp um, spatula with some mold release on it. And that'll allow me to get a better shape. But for now, that's given me a good start. It's taken me uh, about an hour and a half to do these three. And uh, as you can see, it has to be radiused at around about a half inch radius, or well, not even that much, probably half a centimetre, maybe a five millimetre radius would be more likely to give me my window insert. So I've still got to do these side ones. And these side ones and all of these around here. So I'm still working uh, pretty hard in this, in this morning. Janet and I were here about 6.30 this morning. We've got uh, all of the TR um, sealer glaze is now buffed into this whole four deck here so that's pretty much done that just needs one more coat of release wax and it's ready to go uh, Janet's been up the back there uh, in the dark we were in the dark this morning putting on the mold release up in the back here that's that TR uh, sealer glaze here and that's incredible stuff has a beautiful smell it smells a bit like bananas and, uh, and I've got to get up there with the machine buff that all off and then we can do our final couple of release waxes on the entire surface again. But for now, I'm mixing up plasticine and uh, and scalloping it in. <laughs> Bit of a painstaking process doing this, but the result is uh, I don't have windows sitting on the outside of my mould rather than uh, having flush ones that are a lot more waterproof. And they're going to be with a polycarbonate um, window, tinted window, like you see on most cats uh, of this age. But they'll be flush up at the top. And this radius actually is going to be filled with Sikaflex. So the nice thing about that is that you end up with a flush surface that's going to ultimately um, end up being a lot more waterproof and a lot more cosmetically correct, I guess you could say. Nah, I think I want this six hours of my life back. This plasticine, it's taking way too long. But you gotta do a good job here, this is the problem. If you don't do a good job here, you're gonna have problems later on. So I'm really being meticulous with this, trying to get it as neat as possible because I know that's going to be the, the internal form of the boat. However, even having said that, um, you're not gonna see any of this. I just want an easier time going forward. Good morning. Good morning. What are you doing? Uh, prepping. What are you doing? Um, I've cleaned the nuts with metho and then I've put this tape over so that you can spray around and then you'll be able to get the bolts out afterwards. Perfect. And then these are just the old screw holes that we fill in with um, plasticine so that they don't get gel coat down. Cool. We're almost there, aren't we? Tomorrow's the day, so a lot of prep, 84 bolts. Then I can go back to normal sleep time and not early starts. <laughs> Janet and I will admit it, we're not early morning people, we're late night people. And uh, oh. your problem is it's been so dark in here, I've now got lights. I've actually got a light I put in here, so I'll be able to do some night work. But once I get the gel coat down, I'll be able to go back to a normal regime of I just prefer breakfast as a breakfast stage rather than sucking cake on it or sandy <laughs> You'd rather go to the coffee shop? Yeah, well, I'd rather be home having breakfast, but just, uh, I've been spending my breakfast. Yeah, every morning we've been up here before Janet goes to work and then she comes back afterwards, generally with a uh, bottle of water for me. But anyway, we're getting it done. We've only got this small part down here in the cockpit to do. 
and then we've got to start prepping the factory's clean we've got the cloth cutting table we're going to prep all this back area here with another big platform like this and a couple of other pallets so we can have our machine and our resin and everything ready to go right at the doorstep and uh, luckily as unlike the hull we don't have to carry the 20 litre drums up the stairs every time to get them to the top having a well earned coffee having a few early mornings haven't we honey yeah yeah so it's coffee time pam's just pulled up and uh tomorrow's gelco day so we're almost there where janet's been prepping all the bolts i'm doing the last bit of polish the last bit of 1200 then i'm going to buff and then we're going to start putting the tr release on start preparing the whole area so it's been a big big couple of weeks this probably the biggest four weeks we've done eh? Yeah, since well, since I the whole big for you oh, it's been big for you you're going and working a 90 hour day as well as doing this extra two or three hours oh, a day on this it's all good fun. fun wax on wax off <laughs> wax on wax off doing a good job ronnie <laughs> ronnie uh Ronnie came down to Jervis Bay last week, it is 11.60 and uh, did we have a storm or what? We had a storm. Yeah, we had, uh, I think Top, we... Topped out at 42 knots. 42 knots, about 15 inches of rain I think fell on the state and poor Ron and Leslie were stuck out in the bay, not able to hold anchor because there's not very good moorings around this area. And uh, I get this phone call yesterday after a week of him sitting out in the maelstrom on his catamaran and he said, I'd like to come and do some work for you. And I thought, oh, what great timing. So here he is. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> he's, wax uh, on, wax off. He's putting the last coat of release agent on, the TR release. And he's loving it, don't you, mate? Oh, this is the best I've ever done. <laughs> I've been waiting a lifetime for this. You just think how much polishing experience you're going to have at the end of this session. Yeah, I know. So I spent the morning buffing off the... Um, the sealer glaze and Ron's putting on the last coat of TR which I'm going to come back to tomorrow and wipe off so this is our final coat eh mate so all the work I'm doing the little fucking bastard's going to wipe it all off <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering why I'm here do you believe it he says it he says it as it is our Ron he doesn't uh, mince his words but yes he's doing a great job there he's putting that that nice little coat of TR on there and as he said I'm going to wipe it off and negate everything he's done but it'll hopefully pay off and i actually said this to janet this morning ron i said all the work we're doing now you don't appreciate until you pull it out of the mold yeah. and that's the problem with all this work yeah, watching not... you pull that other one out yeah but... you just say thank god i put all that release yeah. agent on because if you hadn't put it on you'd have a written off boat you'd be cutting the mold away <sighs> gotta get the proof see the man working for a change does all right for an old fella, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm going to be a bloody martial arts expert after yeah, this. Wax on, wax yeah. off. It's a bloody mantra. It's a good mantra to have, really. It's yeah. quite meditative. Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, that's it. Looking good, Ronnie. Now you'll notice I'm never touching the surface with my skin. If you do, you get oils or anything on there and that may affect release. Now I'm not really concerned about it with the age of this mould because it's been well and truly seasoned. But I've done a lot of work here and uh, one of the comments we had was about our boots and our shoes being on the mould. Um, as I gradually work through the reparation and the, the restoration and the restore and the, and the repair of this mould, uh, I gradually go to softer shoes. I'm into my trainers today, which have a really soft sole. Typically, I should be in slippers, but um, given the age of this mould and the finish that we've, the desired finish that I've achieved here, um, I'm more than happy with the size of this boat. I mean, the worst case we're gonna have is a little bit of buffing at the other end, but um, for now, I'm always working away from my job too. I want to go back on it and then I'm going to come back again with another set of cloths.
Uh, it's gel coat day tomorrow, and uh, so far, I've finished, except this last bit, and I'm basically polishing myself out the door, and then the next person to come in here is gonna have to tread very carefully. What I really want then is to have two fresh cloths per person, probably three of us in here, we're gonna give it a total wipe out. And I've already wiped all the TR release off, and then we're gonna get rid of any lint and everything. And then first thing tomorrow morning, we're gonna get in here and set our machine up and, uh, and get spraying. Now, I've also, uh, like I did with the last one, I've actually put a large silver tarp up across the front there. And I've got this other one that I got a couple of weeks ago and I put it up to stop the rain, but it's actually going to stop any overspray back onto my tent out the back there because ultimately I want to sell these tents again to somebody else or somebody with the mold or without the mold. And, and I don't want to damage that uh, cover at the front. So I want to try to keep the, the gel coat off any surface. Now the rest of it down the side here is no problem because the overspray is going onto the tarp there. And similarly over here, it's just going to go onto the tarp. But for now, I've pretty much prepared this entire thing. I've got two more surfaces to, to polish. I've got to polish this floor here, and I just need then to put the TR release on this floor section, and I'm out, and everything's out then, except for clots, socks, and guys and girls in bunny suits. Now I've got Ellen, my 21-year-old daughter. She's not quite 21, she's 21 this year, coming down from Sydney. And uh, Samo, my 26-year-old son, who's always here for major milestone days and you know they both dig deep for dad and uh, gotta love them. There's nothing more pleasing than having kids that are interested in uh, in what you're doing and you know, I don't know what they're interested but you know I sort of lay the guilt on them. Good old, uh, good old dad guilt always always pays off a little bit but you know God love them. They're coming down, they're giving up a weekend, they're coming down to help dad do the gel coating. We're going to need three of us here tomorrow. Two people, uh, one person to manage the hose so that I'm not draping it through my gel coat and the second person to pour the gel coat. I don't know whether Johnny's coming over as well and Janet's going to stay home and zip back and forth and feed us and water us as the day goes on and uh, we're going to, she's going to be at home looking after Sam's new puppy with Veronica, uh, Sammy's girlfriend. So uh, the golden retriever, we just want to stop her bloody ripping our house to shreds and, uh, and peeing all over our carpet, I guess. Who knows, she's never been here. I can't wait to see our little grand dog. But yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> 